For Reaction Now, let's bring in Dan Hanniger from the Wall Street Journal. He is a Fox News contributor. So, Dan, I mean, you know, we're a finance show. We focus on the economics of the situation. And we were just seeing relief rally, relief of stores, opening their doors and getting going again. And then you see this destruction. How much does this set us back from an economic point of view? Well, I think the biggest setback, uh, Melissa, is going to be primarily psychological rather than explicitly economic, but psychological in a very big way. I think uh, most of the American, I mean, you've had virtually the entire country watching this in real time for two or three straight nights. And I think the reaction for many people is that they are simply stunned, that they have gone numb looking at the reality of something like this happening, happening all over the country. Now, the recovery needed eventually to be led by the Northeast, New York City, huge part of the U.S. economy, maybe a third. And I think, Melissa, this is going to have a really downward effect on decisions businesses are making on reopening in New York, and I mean offices as well, and even relocation decisions. If you're sitting out there watching this happening, it was going to be difficult enough to get workers to come back amid the coronavirus. But now, after this, I think a lot of some companies are going to be deciding they have to relocate out of places like New York, Philadelphia, Minneapolis, Los Angeles, and simply get away from a situation that is this volatile and this dangerous. It is simply not worth it for those businesses. And what's so frustrating is that was no doubt the point of a lot of people in the crowd. I mean, there were those who were sincerely protesting the horrible thing that went on in Minneapolis, but there was also, you know, there's, there is a group, um, you know, whether they're anarchists or if we look in Brooklyn, they were carrying flyers saying they were the independent socialist organization, um, you know, saying that they wanted the end basically of capitalism, that the, that the system wasn't working. And so their idea is to go out and disrupt what is a recovery. And I think you're 100 percent right in the sense that we were looking at a reopening here in Manhattan of June 8th. And and all of us parents got those forms that said, are you re-enrolling your child for the fall? That was for today, June 1st. I don't think it's a coincidence something like this happens. And it does seal the deal for many families and others who, who weren't feeling safe. So what does what does that mean for a city like New York and these other big areas? Well, I think the burden is on New York and these cities to reestablish order. I mean, here's an interesting question for us. We've been watching this for several days now, and virtually every commentator comes on and says peaceful protest is legitimate, uh, they have a right to protest, and so forth and so on. We're now going into the fourth night, and I would raise the question, if that peaceful protest inevitably means that embedded in the middle of them, there will be rioters, there will be looters, by what justification should the cities be authorizing protests of any sort until the protest can be cleaned up and uh, rid themselves of the rioters and looters among them? But if you're simply going to open your streets for another night of what we've been seeing here, uh, people are simply going to vote with their feet. And whether it's getting their kids out of the schools or moving out into the suburbs, they're going to leave yeah. these neighborhoods behind. And I mean, that was the eloquent point made by George Lloyd's brother, Terrence. Folks, he said, you are destroying your own neighborhoods. No one could have said it better than Terrence Floyd. So I think there's a good question yeah. whether uh, these protests should be allowed to continue like this night after night. Well, so now they've put a curfew in place in a lot of places. New York is one of them. Last mm -hmm. night, our mayor de Blasio was tweeting, there are protests going on in Union Square. They are peaceful by all accounts. At the moment he was tweeting this, Soho was being looted and destroyed. They were breaking windows. And you wonder, was he at home asleep on the job? You know, how was he tweeting about peaceful, you know, this is fine, when right under his nose in another part of the city, the city was being torched. It's, you know, as if he has no control and no clue what's going on. Um, former Mayor Giuliani, you could say a lot about him, but he did make the city a place where we can live again. He said that the first brick that was thrown, the second brick, those people needed to be arrested immediately, and that the cops in Minneapolis also needed, they needed first degree murder right away. I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? 
Well, I agree. I don't think they were going to be able to prove first degree murder, as Andy McCarthy has said over and over again on Fox. Third degree murder is the appropriate charge. But the worst part of the one of the worst aspects here is that people like uh, Bill de Blasio and Governor Cuomo, the attorney general here in New York, Letitia James, even amidst these events happening with the looting and rioting and smashing of windows, have been stating a kind of moral equivalence between the police and the rioters and raising the question of whether the police are being too aggressive. How, by any definition, are they being too aggressive if the rioting and looting is continuing night after night? Yeah. Dan Hanegar, thank you for that, Connell.